a CRM, you need just about anything. Don't You don't need to spend a ton of money. If your brokerage has one, your brokerage has one, right? Like you could use the cheapest thing. If it's free, just use it. It's literally just the best CRM you can use is the one you use, right? Like it just, it, I just would recommend doing anything other than an Excel spreadsheet. Again, if your brokerage has one, I recommend using it. If not, just get something that's, even if it's a residential CRM, they all do the same thing. It's not a big deal. Like follow up boss, I saw that one's pretty popular. Yeah, I use follow up boss personally, actually. So uh, you could use that. Mojo, the reason, uh, let me explain the portenance in a very short way. How many calls do you make a day? Roughly through hand dialing? 100. On average, my guys make between 350 and 450 calls a day. Mm -hmm. Some of the best guys make 600 to 1,000 calls a day. It's very hard to do that hand dialing. Just right. No, it is. Because a lot of them aren't even the right numbers. 100%. So that's why I always say like, you know, um, don't get me wrong. It's not just a numbers game, but it sure as hell helps. You know, I look at Mojo as kind of puts your ability on steroids, right? It's like, it, it's a legal version of quote cheating when it comes to prospecting. Because you can prospect three people at the same exact time. You can actually look into a software called Call Tools. It's also, it's very similar to Mojo. I don't know if it's cheaper or not. I haven't used it personally. I know a couple of our agents in the program have used call tools and seen some success with it as well. It's almost identical to Mojo in the sense of that it is just a dialer. It might also be a CRM system. So I would just look into that. I know it has some other capabilities, but Mojo is about 150 bucks a month. Again, Mojo kind of just takes your ability and puts it on steroids, right? Like, you know, time, the amount of numbers you can dial at the same exact time gives you the most opportunities in the shortest time frames. Okay. Yeah. 100%. So, I definitely like to say that Mojo isn't required, but it sure as hell helps. It gives you a good boost. So uh, that's Mojo and CRM system. Rihanna, you got down pat. You know, not, don't need to talk too much on that. For conversion, I want to talk to you about this though. If you wanna, if you wanna see this, because I'm gonna do this all on Rihanna, so you can kind of see exactly what I'm doing here. This is how we do it for finding buyers. Let's first off do it this way. Um, let's go into what's the address of the property that you're trying to sell. So watch very simply. You go back, zoom out a little bit. Let's see here. We'll just search this area. All you do is, again, all I did was zoom out a little bit, search this area, property type, multifamily. Let's go into more filters under multifamily. Uh, let's apply. So again, I don't need all of these. I just need this one, multifamily general, because I don't need quad, you know, the do families and mobile homes and all that kind of stuff. I don't need all that. I just need general multifamily, but I want it to map to what we just talked about, right? So this is gonna be sold, right? Sold within the last two years. Something that was purchased in the last two years where I have an owner's phone number and we're gonna see there's eight properties. So I hit apply. These are gonna be some reference, right? Like the, this guy just bought this, this one guy, Cherry Hill owner LLC, just bought a 64 unit. This guy actually bought and a 32 unit. Maybe, I don't know if it's all the same property. Maybe it is, maybe, maybe it's not. This guy just bought 138 unit. Um, so these would be two people that I would reach out to, right? So we'll watch very simply. You reach out to the, you go to here. This guy, I would definitely know. I would try to know him. I mean, he clearly owns a lot of stuff. I mean, has apparently hasn't bought something in a little while. I don't know if that's accurate, but all I do is like, ready? I would go through these few phone numbers. Yeah, hi, I'm sorry. I was looking for Paul, please. This is wrong number, Ed. Wrong number, sorry about that. Bye. You said you called this guy? Yeah, so that was my next question. So I've called this guy that owns all, I did this this morning, kind of. I kind of took a look at it. When you have, all this, like all these numbers, all this, is there another way? Like obviously Rihanna me, it's not 100% accurate sometimes. Sure. But like I call all these numbers, like- All of them are wrong? It's, yeah, they're, so the mobile number and the residential are wrong. And then the other ones, uh, just no answer. It's okay, hold on. And just to give you some reference. We know your time is valuable. I would do this to any sell any deal. I do this a hundred times a day. Okay. Yeah. You find buyers in the local market, you hunt them down at any cost necessary, you have conversations just like we're about to have, and we get, get a deal done. Or you don't. Know, you know, you just find gotta it. Dig, dig a little deeper then. 100%. I mean, like, a lot of it's public info, right? Like, right. you know, we, we, I Googled the guy's name. This came up. This is his company. It, it matches the same thing as the uh, Rionomy fact that he's in Ohio. It's the same exact thing. Because now I'm going to ask for the acquisitions department. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Henry. Who am I speaking with? Hi, Miranda. Yeah, so again, my name is Henry. I uh, was looking for the acquisitions department. Call is appreciated and is being processed okay. as quickly as possible. Straight to the acquisitions Please remain department. remain on the line. We'll be right with you. Miranda. This is Renee. Hi, Renee. My name is Henry. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing wonderful. Is this the acquisitions department? It's not, but I'm sure I can help you. Okay, I'm wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So, I appreciate that. My name is Henry. I'm a local broker in uh, near Inkster, Michigan. I was talking with my partner t the other day, and we came across an off-market deal that was very similar to the Cherry Hill Village Apartments that the, the uh, your company just acquired. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, you were, I obviously see that you do a lot of business in the area, and I was curious if I would be, at least be able to chat with the um, acquisitions department and see if this is something you might like to look into. Okay. Yep. And um, so Michigan is kind of a. I'm trying to get. Uh, I'm trying to get into the position of not doing business in Michigan anymore. Any reason? Just curious. They're, yeah, they're just not. So they are very unfriendly with out-of-state landlords. Yeah, I understand that. Like very unfriendly. Yeah. And, and there's a few properties where they've done things to make us absolutely miserable, including shutting down our property because we didn't have a local responsible party. So I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, that sounds like fun. I mean, look, I mean, all that all that being said, do you think that would be inhibit you from at least taking a look at it and giving us some feedback? I could um, definitely pass the information along to the director of acquisitions. Okay, I would appreciate it. You said, okay, Jacob. So again, I'll just send him some details via email. Uh, uh, should I CC you on that as well? Or? You can, that's fine. Okay, great. What was your email? Okay, great. Well, look, I appreciate it. Um, so I know you said you weren't trying to do a lot in Michigan. It sounds like Ohio is like your backyard. You'd like to do some more business there. Ohio, Indiana. Um, we've got some properties in Missouri. Yeah. Um, if I would have been here at that time, I don't think we would have. <laughs> I hate Missouri. Ohio, Indiana, what other states would you prefer? Yeah, that's probably it for right now. All right, so we'll just stick to Ohio right and Indiana. Now, no problem. And then just criteria-wise, it sounds like obviously larger the better, like what, 40 plus units? Yes, absolutely. 40 plus units. Okay, sounds great. Well, look, uh, we'll kick this over to you. At least get, I'd love some feedback, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. All I know is that this seller would definitely like to sell and is trying to look to make a deal. And uh, we'd love to at least get your thoughts on it. All right, I appreciate it very much, Renee. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. I'm going to send you all the information if you didn't hear that. I want to make sure you get it. If you want to sell any deal, you just do, like take the first part of your day is going to be three or four hours lead generation every day, which it sounds like you're doing. And this is why I say do Mojo because now instead of doing 100 calls a day where you come across a lead every now and again, when you do Mojo, it obviously will increase the chances of getting more leads. Mm -hmm. And when you generate more leads, right? My, my minimum metric for my sales guys is two leads a day, one offer a day, every day. Five days a week minimum. And that offer is coming from you, right? Just to see where they're at. No, that doesn't include me. That means the amount of people they're calling, pitching deals every freaking day, trying to get yeah. an offer on one of their properties. So like if hypothetically you called up Renee and Renee gave you an offer today on that property, right? You email her today. You see, you can CC me. That's fine. I'll tell, I'll tell you, you know, you can do, um, you can CC me on this email. Let's just say you call her, you send her the email, you go over the details with them on the phone and you get some type of offer from them. That offer counts as one offer today. Okay. And here's the beautiful thing, right? Once you call up Renee now and you call her up and say, Hey, my partner, Henry, that's how you can talk about it, right? My partner, Henry was speaking to you about, uh, the property that we have here in, uh, Inkster. Love to kind of talk to you about it. Get a little bit of feedback. You speak to her one time, two times. All of a sudden now, when you call her a third time, she's like, Oh, Hey, Caleb, how you doing? And now she's yeah. going to, you know, every month or so you can talk to her a few times a month, right? Bring her a deal every now and again. And now you're going to start building a relationship with someone who will probably be able I mean, they for sure close. All you got to do is find what's in their buy box, right? 40 plus units, Ohio or Indiana. Indiana, and it sounds like you should be able to do some business now just do the same exact thing we just did there with every single now here's the interesting thing right what you do is that you can literally go so ready now what you can do is that you go one step further which is let's just use this as a tax basis like all right seventy-eight thousand. so let's just do like thirty thousand in taxes and larger right so you're only dealing with bigger stuff so you go up here you go to tax amount just do like 30k maybe 25 now what you do is you go to owners now every single person on this list you only got 32 people they should all be your best friend right and all their con and you google this information right you google it this person's name. You freaking find out more information about it. I mean, some of them are going to tell you to screw off. They don't want to talk to you. And I guarantee you from this list of 32, if you actually take some energy and effort, which by the way, I'm talking three to four hours a day, every day, minimum four hours a day of lead gym, four hours a day of offer generation. That's your day. The, during your four hours of offer generation, these 32 people on this list should become your best friends. Now what's going to happen is 80% of them are going to not be happy to, you know, to speak with you just normal, right? Happens to me too. 20% of them, which means probably something between four and six, maybe eight people are going to be more than thrilled that you're calling them. Thank you for bringing me deals. Love to, you know, figure out some way for us to do some business. And guess what? These people close. There's proof that they close. Because you said it to not to within one year, right? So these I, are people I, who no, have... I took it off. I took it off. So obviously, but this is super close to you, right? Like this is 
you know, you can go out farther, right? So if you go to uh, properties, I mean, it's a decent radius, but this is the only radius, right? Like if you want to go out, you know, a little bit further, <laughs> right now you're gonna have a lot more properties to play with. I, I didn't do the last two years, you could do that. The other piece of this is if you go to owner now, the other thing is that you could sort by acquisitions date right here, last acquisitions date. And then you just, uh, you just call up the people who are 2024s, 2023s, 2022s. The conversation's so much easier too, I found when you are pitching deals to them as opposed to cold calling them about their property. 100%. At least I feel, I mean, it's so, it's such an easier conversation and yeah. they rarely ever hang up or just say not interested, you know, like they're yeah, like, okay. And listen, if you like to start conversations off as a buyer conversation, then flip it to a seller. No problem, right? If you feel comfortable, that's fine. Like I, I don't believe there's one way to do it. This is why, like, again, this is all my team does every day, four hours lead gen, four hours offer gen. And sometimes it goes for longer. Sometimes it's six hours lead gen and two hours offer gen or eight hours of, all, of lead gen and three hours of offer gen, whatever it's required in order to hit the metrics. Because like right now you might need to spend more time on lead generation than you do on offer generation because you only have so many leads, right? And then eventually it'll it kind of even out over time. And now what uh -oh. you're gonna do is when you call these guys up, you're gonna make sure you get exactly their criteria so you can make sure you can support them. As far as, so this deal, right? Like, how do I even know if it's a good deal? How do I know if this guy's asking way too much? He had it listed call, last year. up and get feedback. For the first, call it couple months of your career, okay? Which by the way, during our underwriting trainings, you will learn more and more how to evaluate. Part of it is obviously comps, but part of it is actually calling up buyers and hearing their feedback. Listen, this guy, and make sure you add some money on there for you as well. So if you call up the guy and you know, he wants 4 million bucks, pitch it out at four or five. Make sure you have some compensation there included there for you. But you call up five buyers and they all keep saying, I think it's worth 3 million, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3 million, 3, 1, 3 million, 3, 3, right? Like you keep calling and getting this feedback, great. It's okay, it's probably worth in that range, right? No matter what the comp say. I try to say the, this is a feedback loop and you just need to speed up the process in which that occurs. Generate a lead. I want the fastest feedback loop possible when you generate a lead, which means you call up three or four or five buyers right away. Here's the deal. Here's the details. At what price can you make sense of making an offer at today? So That's it's not necessary because I haven't had much success with this is emailing them over the financials because I haven't heard, no, I haven't me, heard from any of them. Let me, it's backwards. Okay. That's what most brokers do. Okay. I made the same mistake. I would just send emails and do this. Instead, what you do is you call somebody up and pitch them the deal. And if they're interested, you send them the information and you review it with them on the phone. So it's backwards, right? It's call yeah. first, gauge interest, review details over the phone versus send an email and pray. Right. Because then it's, you know, you're walking them through the deal while you're on the phone with them. It's not like, oh yeah, I'll go take a look at it. Yeah. And then you hear their feedback in real time. Yeah.